Uh, we're in town. No, I can't, but I can meet you at home for lunch if you like. Is there anything I need to be worried about? Okay, I'll see you then. What the hell are you doing? There are clear regulations about the number, type and positioning of campaign posters. If your girlfriend had done her research, then she would be aware of that. You're using the club for your campaign, why wouldn't Martha? Well, if my campaign material has been incorrectly positioned, then it wasn't put there by me. Can we quit all the petty arguing and talk about what's important? Yeah, well, there's only one problem with that. You see, what's important to you certainly isn't going to be important to me. Fine, so we have different views. Let's tell people what they are. You know, that's what I thought campaigning was all about. No, I mean face to face. Get the community to ask us questions. I'm challenging you to a public debate. Sure. When? You're accepting? Yeah, of course. Uh, contact my office and make a date. I'm looking, looking forward to it. Did you see his face? He's got something up his sleeve. He's just trying to unnerve you. I'd better be prepared, otherwise I'm going to look like a fool. And I will help you tonight, I promise. But right now, I've got to get home and get ready for a dive. And don't worry, Palmer's got nothing. You lost something. Don't you hate that? Makes you feel like a real idiot. Knowing you're the key to solving a mystery, but also knowing you're not bright enough to get out of the situation. Is there something I can help you with? Hmm. I'm here to have a little chat about the murder of Grant Bledco. Now, we detectives face a lot of obstacles on the case. Paperwork, long hours. Once, I was even bitten by a monkey called Satchel. But what annoys us most are obstacles that shouldn't be there. I assume you're about to get to the point. Your brother's fantastical story about seeing Charlie Buckton in bed at the time of the murder. Mm. He wasn't alone. Ruby saw her too. Yes. They're very pleased with themselves, aren't they? But we both know Xavier's lying, and I know he's lying to protect his girlfriend. So as an older brother, you should set him straight before he gets himself into any more trouble. Impeding a police investigation is no small matter. I'm aware of that. And then why don't you make him aware that juvenile detention is not worth it? Kids his age should be out there having fun. Slashing tires and that sort of thing. I would really hate to see him do a five-year stint in a correctional facility just for being a lovelorn idiot. Wouldn't you? Hope to find what you're looking for. If I'd known you were going to be so stressed, I would never have shown you Charlie's file last night. I'm damn glad you did. Ross? It's all right, nothing to worry about. I just need to talk to her. Yes, yeah, so you keep telling me. Ross, I am her counsel. Whatever you have to say to her, I need to know about too. Yes, we'll get going. She'll be on a break soon. Well, you're not going on your own. I'm perfectly capable of getting there and back. I am having a good day. Well, good day or not, I'm driving you. Um... Leah, can I settle with you for that slate? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. It's a taxi. Buckton and his charming bride. What brings you here? Family business. Oh, no doubt. Hear all about it from Charlie. Hi. Hey. Mm. Yeah, frantic. Hey, very enjoy it. But I've been sucking on the odd lollipop to get me through. Good. Take that. I was just wondering if enough time has passed since my apology to order a takeaway salad sandwich on whole meal, no butter, and to ask you out on another date. Okay. Meaning the sandwich or the day? You make the arrangements and I'll be there tomorrow night. Deal? Perfect. Coming, Dad! Hey. Hey. Sorry for coming around with that calling, but I thought I might just be lucky enough to catch you. It's fine. What can I do for you? Um, I've just had Robertson in my face. And he thinks Xavier's lying about the alibi and he wants me to talk him into admitting it. Right, well, to be totally honest, it sounded far-fetched to me too. But I haven't managed to poke any holes in Ruby's story. But you've still got your doubts. 
Well, they're sticking to it better than you'd expect if they were making it up. Hmm. So what do I do now? Should I say something to Xavier? Look, obviously it's not in my interest to have their alibi fall apart. But if Robson had any hard evidence, then he wouldn't be trying to rattle Xavier through you. In other words, he's bluffing? He's going on his gut, yeah. But it's probably best that you have a word with Xavier anyway. Hmm. Can I get you a coffee or anything? Uh, thanks, but I've got a group of clients waiting. I've already wasted half the morning looking for my damn dive torch. Um, anyway, look, I'll keep informed on how things go with Xavier. Yeah, that'd be great. Hi, Ross. Oh, hi. Oh, Charlie, great. You're here. Dad, I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. Something's come up and I've got to go to the station. Can this wait? I, I really don't want to put it off. Look, I'll be half an hour, that's it. I can meet you at the surf club after that. Bye. Must be a relief to have your girlfriend back on side. Imagine it took a lot of apologising and grovelling on your behalf. You know, I've got work to do. <laughs> Same work Charlie had to do by the look of it. She was reading Austin's file this morning. It's good to see she's taken an interest in your work again. That's supportive. I bet you're a big romantic comedy fan. Me too. You ever seen Sleepless in Seattle? What has that got to do with anything? Well, apart from being an awesome movie, it's about how fate intervenes to bring two people together. In this case, it's lovers. Though, I think fate intervenes in all our lives to bring us closer to others. Friends, siblings, fathers and daughters. Hi. Angelo. How's lunch with your father? Could you excuse us? <laughs> Didn't know your dad was in town. He's waiting at the surf club for me. Look, I just ran into Hugo. He let it slip that he's missing his dive torch. Are you kidding? Well, there's nothing to prove that it's the same torch that we found. Well, we don't need proof. I'll just let him know that we've got it. If he's in as deep as I think he is, then he's going to get nervous. He's going to start looking over his shoulder. Well, if he's as smart as you say he is, he's not going to start making mistakes now. So we're about to find that out. If you're right about this, it's going to hurt a lot of people. Hugo's family, Martha. Yeah, look, I don't feel really good about that, okay? But if he's involved in people smuggling, he has to pay. Yeah. Come along to the debate. Everybody welcome. Find out what your candidates really stand for. Tea and biscuits provided. <laughs> the great debate. Don't miss it. <laughs> Well, I'm hoping you'll give us full coverage on this. We're both very eager to put forward our ideas. 